The jurisdictional issues that are the most contentious will require bilateral action or maybe trilateral action. Canada and the United States have an ongoing issue over the sta international legal status of the Northwest Passage. We've been able to put that on, on hold as long as no international shipping wanted to come into the Northwest Passage. But we know that that will no longer be the case and the question will be coming to the forefront. Which is it? And it's really going to come down to those two countries working it out. Russia is increasingly asserting control over the Northern Sea Route. Uh, basically, that includes part, but goes beyond the Northwest, uh, Northeast Passage. And it's going to be interesting to see how that works itself out in terms of uh, jurisdictional control. Uh, the other issue that's going to be coming probably in about the next 10 years is the extended continental shelf. Under the terms of the Law of the Sea Convention, uh, there is a clear process for how you are supposed to determine your con extended continental shelf, but at the same time, the overlaps, or basically the disputes, is a, more, is a more accurate way of describing it, have to be negotiated between the various countries. And so we expect, though don't know for certain yet, that there's going to be overlaps quite, you know, slash disputes between Canada, Denmark, and uh, Russia. We're not quite sure where the United States stands because even though they've been doing the science, they're not a party to the convention. And so that's going to have to be added into the pot at one point or another. These, at this point, everybody is saying that uh, they will work this out cooperatively, that there will be no problem. But unfortunately, because the Arctic is becoming so interconnected, Issues such as what's happening in the Ukraine will cast a, a impact on how these are negotiated into the future. If we can get back past this issue in terms of the disputes that are occurring between Russia and the other Arctic states, probably it will be developed peacefully. But if this is the emergence of a new environment, a new security environment, it's going to be a lot more difficult than what I think people have thought. The two countries, or the three countries that have thought the hardest about Arctic policy, both from a unilateral and a, a multilateral, are Canada, Norway, and Russia. Um, all eight Arctic states now have de developed an extensive policy framework, but historically it's been these three countries that, since the end of the Cold War, have been thinking the most about it, both in terms of internal development such as oil and gas, but also thinking in terms of stuff, stuff as multilateral organizations such as the Arctic Council. Russia, of course, recognizes that the Arctic is key to their future prosperity. Their new oil and gas is going to come from the Arctic region. Shipping, transportation is all linked to the Arctic. And so for Russia, their continued prosperity is the Arctic. And so therefore, they've developed a very extensive framework. And they, I dare say they've been putting the most money in terms of infrastructure development. Norway, of course, gets a lot of its money from Northern Sea oil and is, in fact, looking farther north in this regard, also on fishing issues and as a result has also spent a lot of time developing. Canada, we've always had this conceit that we are an Arctic state even though the bulk of our population really is, is about 200 miles within the southern border. And as a result, we've often seen ourselves as a major Arctic player and have spent a lot of time developing things such as in, in cooperation with the Finns, the Arctic Environmental Protection Strategy that then leads to the Arctic Council. So those are sort of the three countries that have spent the most time. The Americans have started to think about the Arctic, but until the arrival really of Hillary Clinton um, in terms of her support of the Arctic Council, basically most things Arctic were thought in terms of Alaska, uh, much to the, you know, the, the hard work of many of the Alaskan senators through the last 10, 10 or so years. And so we haven't seen it, but in the last five years we've seen a pretty extensive development of a policy framework but not so much in the capital programs. So, I mean, the U.S. is still lagging in, in icebreaker construction, uh, port facilities, and so forth in Alaska. Yeah, the most productive, of course, is trying to maintain the, the advantages that we've gained throughout the last decade. In other words, we have to look for ways that we can ensure that the multilateral cooperation that has been developed through both the UNCLOS process and the Arctic Council and other confidence-building measures be maintained. That we figure out a way that the, 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 the impacts from elsewhere, the Ukraine or, or, or North Korea, can somehow be better isolated from disrupting that type of cooperation. If cooperation is to fail, it's going to come from outside. Um, if it's to be maintained, those outside pressures have to be mitigated.